Welcome as we continue our journey through the Word of God. Today we're going to be looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. What does it mean to be a vessel of honour or a vessel of dishonour? This is something that I pray a lot about personally. This is a personal prayer of mine that I pray often and I love being able to just encourage you through my journey uh, of things that God has revealed to me for myself, uh, things that have been a strength and encouragement to me. And this verse has been one of them. But to be honest with you, it's been less of a strength and encouragement to me than a constant challenge. Just a, a constant challenge. That's what this verse is to me. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Paul has just used the picture of, of, of God's building, We're talking about the solid foundation of God, which stands in the previous verse. And now he's talking about the building of the great house that has all these vessels in it, bowls, plates, all these other things. Guzik says this, the church of God is indeed a great house. It is a great house because of who belongs to it. Uh, the house of our great God is certainly a great house. It is a great house because it is planned and designed on a great scale. It has the most brilliant architect and houses a great multitude of the greatest people to ever walk the earth. It is a great house because of the great cost it took to build it. This is a mansion far more valuable than any real estate on earth built by the great work of Jesus on the cross. It is a great house because of its importance. This house and what happens in it is at the center of God's plan of the ages. The business of this house is more important than any of the trivia most of the world is interested in. Uh, vessels of gold in this house, vessels of silver, but there's also wooden clay. Some are used in a very honorable presentations. I think about like, you know, if you've got good silverware or good china or good plates, you know, and you only bring them out when the, when people, when guests come and uh, and the kids say, are we, oh, we're eating off the good plates tonight, you know. Uh, that, that was maybe more of a thing of previous generations, but it, this it's kind of like the good stuff comes out when the guests of honour come, you know. Uh, and then there's others, wooden clay, that it, that's what you use all day, every day. Uh, but then there's some of those things that are also used for dishonor. And I would imagine that you could liken that to the trash that is meant to be taken out of a house. It's not meant to be in there. If it stays in there, it'll stench out the place. So therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, the latter things are the things of dishonor that Timothy has talked about it in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. So this is what he's talking about here. Uh, and if we cleanse ourselves from these dishonorable things, then God will regard us as vessels of honor, sanctified and useful for the master. Conversely, if you're not, then you're not useful for the master. If anyone cleanses himself, Paul spoke about cleansing, that it's not just something that God does while we sit and we're waiting for God to clean us. In other words, you're not sitting there in a bathtub and God's just washing you and you're just watching him wash you clean. No, you and I have an active part to play in our washing. The self-cleansing is for a service that is something beyond cleansing ourselves of sin. We're not washing away the sin. Only the blood of Jesus can do that. What this is, is talking about cleaning ourselves of the junk of this world that allows us to be an honorable vessel, making sure that our trust is 100% in Jesus, making sure that everything that we do is for his eternal purposes. That, that's, that's a little bit of the sense of 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that's what he is able to do. If we confess our sins. So, so there's got to be a confession. There's got to be a cleanse. Yes, yes, I acknowledge I've got dirt on me. And then he can help uh, clean us through the blood of Jesus. But there is another aspect of that cleansing, which God looks at us and says, no, I need you to do that here. 
It's part of your own determination. It's not apart from me, God says. It's, it's something that you do alongside me, but it's going to take your effort. If anyone cleanses himself, uh, usefulness of service, closeness to God. Uh, that, that's what it is. It's, it's like saying, no, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm going to determine to wash off the things of this world so that I can be used by God, sanctified for his service, so that I don't become like trash. I'm actually getting rid of the trash so that he can sanctify me. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to make sure I don't get connected to this world so much that I'm of no use to him. Sanctified just means set apart. It's, a, it's, a, it's not really a difficult word to understand. It just means set apart. They're, they're, if you were to use the analogy here that Paul talks about, the, the, the vessels of honour and dishonour, there are bowls in the home that are more useful than others. Some are just set aside for normal, everyday household purposes. Uh, then there are others that are more prepared for every good work than others. Guzik says this, we must never think that some Christians are better than others or that some have passed into a place where they are super spiritual. However, we must also realize that some Christians are more able to be used by God than others because they have cleansed themselves and made themselves more usable to God. This is, this is part of the, the opportunity that we have to say, God, allow me to be an honorable vessel for you. And I'm going to get to that when I get to my observations, okay? Uh, prepared for every good work. We're, we're not just being used in the sense of what we do on a Sunday in a church service. God wants us to be his people seven days a week, 24 hours a day, including when you're at work, when you're at school, college, wherever you are in your community, with your neighbours. That you need to be prepared for every good work when you're having a conversation with your neighbor, when your neighbor has a need, so that you can be a vessel of honor in that particular time. So really what Paul's saying to Timothy, Paul, Timothy, you need to teach the people that it's up to them to determine whether they want to be set apart. If they will set themselves apart, uh, God won't just wash their sins. He will actually use them as vessels of honor. Now, you can choose not to be used if you want to, but I, I, I would say to you that if that's the case, then when we get to the great white throne judgment where what we've done for Christ, that positive judgment, uh, if you want to know what all that's about, you can go through my end times series from uh, Matthew and First Thessalonians, etc. But when we get to that, it's a positive judgment of looking for the good things to reward us for for eternity. It doesn't determine whether we get in heaven or not then that's when all these things are going to come to light. Did we do what God wanted us to do? Our conduct, it doesn't matter what it is. It needs to be set apart for God. It needs to be useful to God. It needs to be useful to Jesus. Now, here's how you and I live. What we do is either useful to Jesus or it's not useful to Jesus. Again, can you see the Apostle Paul as he gets closer to the end of 2 Timothy? He's narrowing it down, this or this. You know, he's really getting things down. Timothy, you've got to teach people this. It, 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 it will totally affect how God can use you and how he can use other people is your determination to be set apart. Now, um, let me just, let me get here a scripture. I, 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 uh, I hadn't planned on this, but I'm going to just pull it, a, pull it uh, together now because I just felt that uh, I should read this. And uh, I think it really, it hopefully will help us kind of wrap this up. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul is addressing the church in Corinth. And we get to verse 9. And he says, For we are God, God's fellow workers. You are God's fields. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become 
clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. So this is Paul teaching the church that what you do for Christ after salvation does have an impact on your eternity. It doesn't get you into heaven, but it does impact what your eternity will look like. Now, for me, I want to tell you for me what this means. Every single time I'm sitting on the front row, I'm a pastor at a church, and so um, most Sundays I'm standing on the front row waiting for my opportunity whenever I'm called to go up on stage. And whenever I go up on stage, I pray the exact same prayer every single time in preparation, usually during worship. Heavenly Father, allow me to be an honorable vessel for you. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Forgive my sins as I forgive those who have sinned against me. And allow me to speak the words that you want to speak to your people today. I don't want to ever speak to God's people as a dishonorable vessel. Because I know I'll have to pay an eternal price for that. And I want to speak what he wants me to speak. Now, that doesn't mean I always get it right. Doesn't mean I'm always perfect in it. I'm just telling you the heart attitude that I have, and I've developed that heart attitude because of this verse. So there you go. That's my observation is how I live. What's your observation? Put it down in the comments below. Love to hear it. Heavenly Father, thank you. I pray, Lord, that we would set ourselves apart. We'd be determined, every person that watches this, be determined to set themselves apart for the things of God. Be determined to do the things that you have called them to do. Father, so they can do as much for you as they possibly can in their time on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen.